Welcome to my third video in the series, uh, in the stroke series. So in a previous video, I, ta I talked a little bit about the actual stroke experience itself, what happened there, and getting sent off to the hospital. And then once I arrived, and then um, arriving at the hospital, I remember being wheeled out of the ambulance, seeing the fluorescent lights in the ceiling as we were rolling down the hallway, and it was the last time I remember to talk about my wife's voice. All night, I woke up and you know, for briefly, uh, for maybe a few seconds or whatever it was in the in the uh, ER, but then they took me to ICU. So ICU. When I woke up, you know, the nurses were there. You know, my wife was there. You know, and they told me what was going on. And so I mean, so depending on where you're at now, I'm making an assumption if you're watching the video, you've had a stroke or your family members had a stroke. So there's a lot going on. A lot of information overload for you, depending on what your situation is and how severe the stroke is. So in my case, um, I, yeah, I woke up, but something was wrong. Like I said in my other video, I knew something was wrong. And they told me I've had a stroke. And, uh, and so in my situation, left most stroke victims, one side or the other, most most are the left sides, but you know, some have it in the right side. But anyway, mine was left side paralysis leg and arm, and there's absolutely nothing. No feeling, no sensation, no movement. I couldn't, couldn't shrug a shoulder or anything. You see, that's my left shoulder going up there, but, you know, so I couldn't do anything. I couldn't wiggle toes or nothing. Um, you know, so that's severity. One of the other severities of it, or is it affects the left side. You may not notice it as much in you know, other parts of your left side, but like in the voice. Uh, the other role towards also your ability to chew and swallow. So you have to be very careful about that as you know as you're moving forward. So they um, so they was such so in my case, you know, the doctor told me the probability is the, the stroke was caused by combination of being overweight, combination of uh, being diabetic, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. All these factors contribute to having a stroke. Now a disclaimer there that does not mean people who are perfectly healthy don't have strokes they do and you know so it's kind of a conundrum or you call it, but i'm just saying in my situation and a lot of folks i've met since uh you know they have similar but then there's some that no rhyme or reason you have a stroke you have a stroke you know there was nothing that caused it in particular so but in my case you know my my my, my current uh, health at the time was a contributing factor. So that they had me on meds, you know, and I see you, um, you know, the, you know, to check my blood sugar, and if, depending on what, uh, where it was at, like it was over, I think it was 120 or something like that. Whatever it was at, though, they would give me, uh, you know, uh, insulin, and then they also get blood pressure medicines, also blood thinners. Uh, so my stomach was like a, um, you know, pin cushion with blood blood thinners because they give you those too, because it. They're trying to stabilize you, make sure you you know get you under control, prevent any future you know any, another stroke or something happening. They also might do some older sound, sounds on your legs because you know clots can develop and things like that. But anyway, so they did all that stuff. Uh, the other thing, um, because you might you consider it a choking hazard because you know you might not be a chewing swallow, right? So you'd be on what they call a puree puree diet. Or, you know, I mean, there's some solids in there, just depends what they are, but so you'll be on a controlled diet. Um, so for me, that was the beginning of changing my eating habits. So that's more more on that later. But anyway, so in ICU, there. Now, the paralysis part, you can't get out of bed. You know, in bed. If you need to go to the bathroom, you know, some people may have issues with modesty and stuff like that. And uh, I, I don't mean to be blunt, but you gotta get over it. If that's an issue you have, um, you know, uh, they're all professionals and everything. They've seen it all before. So, you know, if, if you are a very modest individual, you, you're gonna have to get past that. And not worry about it when you do the bathroom. So, anyway, so stay in the ICU for a week. Doctors came in there, they explained what was going on, what, you know, the, you know, trying to, you know, get me stable, you know, being stable, recovery, what's next and what's next was a rehab and they came and talked to me and then there was a nurse that came over from the rehab hospital 
Now, the rehab hospital here in St. Louis was right down the road from the main housing, Mercy Hospital, St. Louis. And then there's a Mercy Rehabilitation Hospital. So that's where they want to send me. And so my week in uh, ICU was coming. And then pretty much they want to send me over there Sunday, sometimes Sunday evening. So I'd be ready to get going, rehab, first thing Monday morning. And uh, so here's another issue with like things like taking lots of meds and so forth and diet changes. Uh, I was delayed in getting out of ICU until late, um, until Monday evening, instead of Sunday night. That was because of bowel movements. Like you have, uh, they, they won't let you leave the hospital if you haven't done that. So that set me back a day. But anyway, so got another ambulance ride Monday evening down to the Mercy Rehab Hospital. And then once I got there, they got me processed in. And that I'll talk more about in the next video. Alrighty, so uh, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you some more later.